And what actually is the Maillard reaction? Well, just over 100 years ago, a French chemist called Louis Camille Maillard published a paper about how the sugars and amino acids react with each other when the temperature is raised. However, it took an American chemist, John Hodge, some 40 years later to show the actual mechanism for this reaction. These two scientists, though not actually working together, are responsible for our understanding of the Maillard reaction. Maillard discovered the reaction, but it took Hodge to actually understand the process. The actual result of the reaction is to both change food's flavour and also its colour. This is due to the chemical changes taking place within the food itself. They take place in many foods, from the crust of a loaf of bread to popcorn, coffee and meat. But there's also a downside to the Maillard reaction. So it actually can take place inside the human body without heating and can cause some serious medical problems. Now before Maillard, everybody knew that something was happening to food when it was cooked, but there's been surprisingly little scientific examination of the actual process of cooking and the resultant flavours that were produced by the process. It wasn't really until there was need to store food on an industrial scale for long periods and still keep them appetising that close attention was paid to the details of the Maillard reaction. Now the actual chemical process is actually fairly complicated, but in general what's happening is that on the sugar, a carbonyl group or carbon and oxygen that double bonded react with an amino group on a protein, producing water and glycosalamine. Because glycosalamine is unstable, it transforms into a series of amino ketose products which then undergo further changes to produce the smells and flavours we associate with cooking. And because the number of different compounds that are involved and the way they can combine there can be thousands of different chemicals that are produced that only a fraction of these go towards the smell and flavour of the food. And by changing temperature, pH, water levels as well as the starting proteins you can alter the chemicals that are produced and hence change the flavours that result. This is the reason for the difference in taste between ultra heat treated or UHT milk and pasteurised milk. So by understanding this process you can attempt to remove undesirable flavours and create those which make the food more appetising. Now since the carbonyl group from the sugar that's used is fairly standard chemical, the actual type of sugar has a minimal role to play in the end result. Instead the key driver of the process is the protein. So there can be a number of different amino acids actually involved at the beginning, producing a multitude of different flavours. However, it isn't all good news. Acrylamides and HMF can also be both produced in the cooking process. And these have the potential to be factors in cancer related conditions. The risk is small, but it's still present, and the food industry is attempting to remove as much of these chemicals as possible in processed food. It's generally a far greater risk to health of undercooking most foods and not killing off the bacteria present than in overcooking. However, it is recommended that if you're cooking things like chips or fries or toast, it can be lightly golden brown in colour when cooked rather than in darker colour. The other issue to health is because Maillard reaction can actually take place within an organic body at lower temperatures, and since the human body is actually full of both sugars and proteins, this reaction can take place in the human body, but at a far slower rate than when cooking food. The human body can normally remove these unwanted products from the cells, but in some places like the eyes, these can accumulate and are a factor in medical conditions ranging from cataracts to diabetes and liver disease. So that's the Maillard reactions, sugars and proteins combining to produce more than just cooked food.